I offer these words in the name of God, who holds our heart and our souls and our sufferings and redeems them all. In the name of God, the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. As some might say, or as my father might have said, wow, that was a doozy of a text. When you look at the reading from the book of Numbers from the Hebrew Bible today, because it's, it's odd in that and shocking to us in that it shows both God's mercy. God liberated the people from Egypt and God's fiery wrath. That when they complained, when they didn't move in gratitude, when they didn't embrace the new life, when they didn't see what was in front of them and only saw what was behind them and complained to God, God sent these poisonous snakes all around them. And if they were bitten, they died. And so God's mercy, of course, fills in again, and Moses is instructed to make a totem, a healing totem that has a snake on the top of his staff, so that that which was killing them actually became that which saved them. It's a huge lesson in that for us. For we always have to look at when we hear about the Israelites to think of them as a prototype, as a group of people, but not a group of people who live long, far away and, you know, they don't have any relevance to our life, but to understand how that story fits into our story, the story of our salvation. And here's how I think it works. My sense is that that which is within us that which is causing us pain, that which is pulling us away from the right living with God, whether it is fear or control or greed or an addiction or a need to be, to know everything that's coming next, whatever that is, that is opposite or takes us away from trusting God, becomes the source of our salvation. And I think that happens only when we name it and we invite God into it for God to redeem it. I think it was really important that when Jesus hung on that cross, he brought with him all of the human hatred and anger and divisiveness and a sense of one group, the Roman Empire, always being dominant and superior to all the other people, the Jews who lived there. All of that division, all of that intention, all of that desire for power, and likewise with the religious authorities, when you think about that, that they had gotten off track. But Jesus had to take all of that upon himself and raise it high upon the cross, just as Moses held his totem up high with a snake on it so that God could be brought into it and redeem it. And when I say and God can redeem the suffering or the pain or the dishonesty or whatever that is within us, I mean God can make it whole. And it can actually be the portal through which we can be healed. I think what is healing in this story is the pattern that we see, which is that God liberates and we've all experienced this, when suddenly something was lifted from us, some sorrow, whatever that is, suddenly we're in a new place. We've crossed through a threshold into a new way of being. And when that happens, even if that was a painful process of being set free, when we are set free, we are suddenly aware of how much we needed it. Now, I think there's always that pause moment when many of us get scared and we don't know what's coming next or how we're going to live into this new liberated being. And so sometimes we want to crawl back into the old place, even if it wasn't bad. The Israelites kept saying, I'd rather go back to Egypt where I was beaten and I was enslaved rather than die in this desert. They had forgotten because they couldn't see what God was leading them into. And so when God liberates us, 
I think we have a choice. We can turn and get down on our knees and be grateful. We can rush to go backwards because it's too darn scary to have something so brand new happen in our lives. Or we can trust that God will continue to lead us forward. So when we are liberated, it gives us an opportunity to recognize first how much we needed it. And then second of all, to understand how dependent we are on God. Because God is all, the only thing that can bring us out that true liberation. And then we can trust that God will heal us. And the place where God heals us is when we open our hearts, when we become vulnerable, and we invite God into our situation. Because as soon as God is in it, the only option ever is to be healed. So we're working our way through Lent. We're in the fourth week in Lent. We have one more and then it's Palm Sunday. So we know we're getting closer to the cross. And it's a wonderful time to be reminded in John's Gospel that God, that Jesus came not to condemn us, but to save us. And Jesus saved us by being a part of our human life. It is the encounter with the Holy that saves us. And we can open our hearts ever more fully for that glorious moment when we give our heart to God and God surrounds us with God's love. Our suffering and our pain can be a portal into the holy for God holds it all. We open ourselves and we are healed. Amen. <laughs>